The heat content of the oceans completely dwarfs the amount of heat in the atmosphere. It takes a thousand times as much heat to warm a volume of water by one degree as it would the same volume of air. Global warming is really the story of ocean warming. In a three to seven year cycle, the heat from the great ocean reservoir in the western Pacific sloshes over into the eastern Pacific and hovers near the coast of South America. We call this an El Nino event, and since it releases massive amounts of stored heat from the oceans, it has a major impact on the atmosphere, causing temperatures to rise all over the planet. In 1998, scientists measured the greatest El Nino of all time. The event affected temperature readings around the globe and made that year one of the warmest ever. It's become the basis for one of the most enduring of all climate denial crocs that global warming stopped in 1998. To get a clearer picture of where global temperature measurements are today, let's look at the instrumental record. This graph from the National Aeronautic and Space Administration shows the record of reliable scientific measurements going back to 1880 and shows an obvious warming trend throughout that period. The denialists would like you to ignore 90% of this picture and concentrate here in the last decade or two. When we look at NASA's data for recent years, what we see is that 1998, boosted by the giant El Nino, is tied for the second warmest year on record. Seven years later, without any help from an El Nino, 2005 became the warmest ever. 2007, with a moderate El Nino which made a very warm winter, is tied with 1998. 2008, which would have been a record-shattering year two decades ago, was relatively cooler than the previous years, in large part because, instead of an El Nino event, since 2007 the Pacific has been in a cool phase, the phase we call La Nina. La Nina events have the opposite effect from an El Nino on global temperatures. Deniers like to graph from the peak El Nino year of 98 to the La Nina year of 2008 and say, there you see, global warming stopped in 1998. It's very important to choose the exact year, 1998, and it's easy to see why. You never hear anyone say, global warming stopped in 1999, or global warming stopped in 1997. From the point of view of NASA, the scientists who actually collect the data, 2008 was the ninth warmest year in the instrumental record, and the nine warmest years all occur within the 11-year period from 1998 to 2008. But looking at global temperature over such short periods of time is not a way to measure climate change. If we look at the NASA temperature graph over several decades, we can see why. Deniers would like us to look at the last decade or so and draw a flat, unchanging line. But depending on where we start our line and how long we make it, we can show just about any effect we want. For instance, take a seven-year line from the early to mid-80s and you can show a cooling. Does that mean global warming stopped in 1980? You can show the same thing if you start a seven-year line in the late 80s to early 90s. If you want to show steep warming, start a few years before the 98 El Nino. In fact, if you are using seven-year trend lines like these, just choose the start year you want for whatever effect you want to prove. This is called cherry picking. It's another technique that deniers have mastered. If you make your trend lines longer, say eight-year trends, you begin to see how they flatten out and begin to match up with longer-term warming trends. If you show 15-year lines, the flattening out of the year-to-year -year variation is clear. The longer trend line gives you a more accurate measure of what climate is doing. Deniers often like to muddy the debate by using different temperature data sets like that of the highly respected British Meteorological Office. The Met Office curve shows 1998 as the warmest year by a fraction of a degree mainly because the Met Office measures the heat of the Arctic Ocean and ice cap differently than NASA does. Both data sets are highly useful and respected. 
but the Met Office is aware that their data is being misused. In 2008, they published an official statement on climate change entitled, Global Warming Goes On. They made it very clear that anyone who says warming has stopped has his or her head in a place it shouldn't be. And they included a graph making exactly the same point I just made, that those who seek to lie with graphs and statistics can do so simply by varying the start time and the duration of the period measured. The bottom line is that warming is robust now over several decades, including the current one. Deniers are determined and well-funded. They are losing the battle of ideas, but the profits to be made by ignoring fact and science motivate them to a desperate, all-out campaign of lies and deception. To keep track of the truth and get the documented ammunition you need to stamp out the lies, keep coming back to climate denial crock of the week. We've had a boisterous discussion going for weeks now in the various comments sections, so don't be afraid to jump in. And we'll see you right here next week.